This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the new Razer Core X. So it's the more affordable version of the Razer Core. The Razer Core V2 is $499, so $500 is pretty expensive spend. Does not include the graphics card, so potentially say you want to get a GTX 1080 and put it there and make it worth your while, you're looking at almost $1,100, right? Well, this one's $299, or call it $300. So more affordable, still it's an expensive proposition it's for those who have some more money really to spend and you want a nice mobile laptop on the go but you want to bring it home and dock it to this to have some serious gaming going on. We're going to look at it now. So the Razer Core connects to any Thunderbolt 3 equipped laptop or really actually desktop too but you might as well just throw a desktop graphics card inside the desktop computer if you had one. It comes with I swear, the world's shortest Thunderbolt 3 cable. So this is what's called an active cable and it supports 100 watts charging which is a new thing for the Razer Core X. The Razer Core V2 supports 65 watts of power out. This one goes up to 100 watts. That said, Razer also sells a 2 meter cable that's only rated to do that old 65 watts. So if you want the 100 watts out, you're going to have to go on Amazon. And there's Cables Matter brand for about 60 bucks. And there's a Belkin for around 70 bucks if you want a longer cable because this can be a little bit annoying. Ideally, you're going to want something with full four PCIe lanes. This is something I talk about every time I review a laptop, how many lanes it has. So that's 40 gigabit per second. So you're going to have the max throughput between the GPU and your laptop. This is compatible with Macs too. Unless you're willing to hack around with some drivers or you can have to go with an AMD card because for several years now, Apple has only been selling Macs with AMD cards and they only have AMD drivers for it. So officially that's the way you'd have to roll if you want to use a Mac. Now that 100 watts of power output is probably enough to charge certainly a 13 inch MacBook Pro, maybe a 15. Now we're going to use the Dell XPS 15 2 in 1 that you're going to see and that one comes with a 130 watt charger of its own and it complains when we plug it into the 100 watts and it says oh it's only going to slow charge. So there's not a lot of 45 watt quad or 6 core CPUs out there that really can make do with 100 watts of charging but if you're using this with something like the Razer Blade Stealth or an HP Spectre X360, any of those Ultrabooks with 15 watt CPUs then certainly you'll have enough charging power going through. Ideally, you're going to want to have more than one Thunderbolt 3 port on your laptop or a good selection of legacy ports here because you're going to have to plug in your gaming mouse, your keyboard, all of that sort of thing. So make sure you have enough ports to go around to do that sort of thing because that's an important difference between the Core X and the older Core V2. The older Core V2 also functioned as something of a desktop hub or docking station. It has several USB-A ports and it had Ethernet. This has none of those as part of how they get the cost down on this product. So though it's a lot bigger and a lot heavier because it has a bigger power supply and can hold bigger graphics cards, you're not going to get any other ports on this. There's no chroma lighting either, which, okay, whatever. I don't care so much about that, right? You want the power from the GPU more than you care about the lighting probably. Another thing with these external GPUs, for those of you who don't know, is you really want to plug an external monitor into the graphics cards ports on the back, be it DisplayPort or HDMI, whatever you're using there, because of the way the, the circuitry runs inside of the laptop. You're going to get your full performance if you plug a monitor into the eGPU with the graphics card inside. So. Yeah, you're not going to see nearly as much of a performance improvement if you try playing on the internal display of the laptop. Now, when it comes to applications like video editing and that sort of thing, a few of them, and under Mac OS too, a few of them are actually optimized to do the rendering on the card. So for things that actually are doing rendering, not playing games so much and looking at it, it makes some sense to do that if you're doing CAD sort of work or if you're doing rendering in video. So here's one of the drawbacks with these eGPUs. The only time that you'll see the eGPU bundled with a graphics card is something a company like MSI who actually sells their own graphics cards. Usually, and in the case of the Razer, for sure, you don't get a graphics card. So even though this is more affordable at $300, which is certainly nice, coming down to the price range of the Alienware graphics amplifier, for example, in addition, you're going to have to buy that GPU. So GPU prices are a little bit better now. They were really crazy because everybody was using them for 
for mining Bitcoin and all that sort of thing. Right now, uh, say a GTX 1080, a card that's going to last a while, make it worth your while, still sells between $550 and $600. So together, you got another $300 bucks and you're looking at $900, $1,000. Depends on how you want to roll. Of course, you could put something in like a GTX 1060, assuming your laptop doesn't have something as good as that inside, which probably doesn't if you're thinking about doing this kind of setup. So yeah, still a pricey proposition, probably will be for some time to come. You do have choices of other brands. Obviously, like I mentioned, MSI has their own GPU box and there's several good ones out there. This one I have to say is very well made. It's pretty easy to put the card in. It's toolless. The, the, the screw that holds the graphics card down is knurled. So you could in theory use your finger, but boy, let me tell you, it's just about no way to get your skinny fingers. Even if you have long skinny fingers like me in there, you're probably gonna wanna use a screwdriver to make it easier. So it's well built. It has that 650 watt full ATX power supply and the 100 watts out for charging. So that's what sets us apart from some of the competition. So the enclosure is well made and it's also metal, very heavy. This is mesh ventilation right here. We've got ventilation in the front. So this is all really well done obviously ventilation in the back. So to open it up, it's as simple as grabbing this handle right here and pulling out like so. And then there's our internals. By the way, most of the weight's actually in the cover, not in the bottom part of the chassis. So very large fan inside. Here's our power supply, all looking pretty good. And on this side, this is the slot where we put the card in. And again, you can put up to a triple wide card in here. So I've got a double wide card that I'm going to put inside, which is this NVIDIA GTX 1070 card. This one happens to be a Seuss branded. That doesn't really matter. So a big beefy card. So you unscrew the little knurled nut that they have sitting inside there, and you just drop this right in. It's not too hard. So here's the little knurled nut that retains the card. Thank goodness it does have a slot in it. So you can use a Phillips or a slot head screwdriver. And then there's this little crevice cranny right in here where you have to go and screw the card in. It's not the easiest thing because there's not a whole lot of reach there. Like I said, you can always resort to using a screwdriver to get that in. Next, this card only needs the single connector. Obviously we have other here in case you have a super duper great graphics card like a Titan, which we don't have. So this is as simple as just plugging it in here, like you would do on a desktop computer, for those of you who are familiar with such things. Pretty easy to slide it back in, get it in all the way, and then you just lock it in place with the handle. Another bonus, say you're using something like a 14-inch razor blade with the GTX 1060 inside, or even the 15-inch current generation with the GTX 1060 Max-Q. When you're at home, you want even more graphics performance power. Okay, so you can do that. Um, you know, you really have to have a 1060 or lower in your laptop to really make this worthwhile in terms of performance gain. I'll say that much, but another nice part is, you know how those thin and light gaming laptops do get extremely hot. So with these external graphics amplifiers, only one card is active. Once you plug in the amplifier with the card, only the external graphics card will be active. The internal one will be deactivated, which means half the heat is gone from the system. So your laptop will run a lot cooler, which is pretty nice because all these thin and light Gaming laptops are very heat constrained. I mean, they're toaster ovens. You can fry eggs on them. You know, you get the idea there. Since the internal GPU is disabled, whether you're using AMD or you're using NVIDIA, GTX, whatever card in there, there's no SLI, there's nothing like that going on. Single GPU mode only. Also, the performance loss compared to, say, plugging this into a desktop is typically about 10 to 15 percent because you've got a lot of extra stuff going on here. This is not a native GPU installed in the laptop, and that's assuming a full four PCIe lane set up there, which is one of the reasons why I'm saying you really want to have a GTX 1060 or lower in your laptop to make this worthwhile and then put a GTX 1080 or 1080 Ti in the enclosure so you get enough of a performance bump where you feel like you're really doing something. All right, so now we've got our nifty GTX 1070 desktop card inside of the core attached to the razor blade stuff. This is one of the probably typical use cases where somebody wants a really thin and light ultrabook they can take anywhere, but it doesn't certainly have the gaming chops to play uh, AAA titles today or even something like PUBG or anything like that with Intel integrated graphics only. So the results of the test show, and you can see our fire strike result right there. It's a decent score for a GTX 1070, but not as good as we would see if it, it was a laptop, say a quad core gaming laptop or a new six core gaming laptop that had a GTX 10. 
70 mobile version inside, which is pretty close to the desktop these days. So you're losing performance now two ways. The first is, is that there's I.O. There's a lot of bits and bytes being transferred around the subsystem of the laptop. This is not something directly connected to the motherboard, for example. So you're going to lose some performance there. And the other thing is, even though Firestrike and also Time Spy, and we'll show you the result of that as well, are both very graphics intensive, but they do call on the CPU somewhat. And so that's always the challenge when you're using one of the 15 watt Ultrabook CPUs in here, even though they're quad core these days and pretty performant, they're not as fast as a gaming laptop. CPU is. So that is going to bring down the score a bit as well. So some games that are a little bit CPU heavy or more than a little bit CPU heavy, which includes a lot of open world games, even like Far Cry 5, for example, you're not going to see the same level of performance. That said, you can see we have some Far Cry footage and it is playing pretty well. Now, it's still not as well as the Razer Blade 15 that we recently reviewed, which has a GTX 1070 Max-Q. So that's the lower power version of the laptop version of the 1070, where we were doing about 103 to 110 frames on high, whereas here, obviously, you can see the frame rate counter in the upper corner. We're doing, you know, 70, 60, that sort of thing. So it's certainly very playable and it's very fluid, and that part's good. Now, the other thing you might want to do with this, besides using an Ultrabook where the CPU can be a bottleneck at times, is using something with a beefier CPU. So we're going to do something interesting next. We're going to go with the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1, the 9570. So that has the quad-core CPU inside 45 watts. And we'll see how that performs. Another reason you might want to use this product is say you have a gaming laptop, a CPU is still pretty good, but the, the GPU, maybe it's like a GTX 970 or something that's kind of out, out of date, it's not performing well. This would be a way to bring life to or new life to an old gaming laptop. But you still have to consider how much money you're spending when you do that because this whole setup, like I said, even though the Core X is more affordable, so you want to get a good GPU in here, you might be spending $800 or so. So you have to decide whether you could sell your old gaming laptop instead and just use that money towards buying a new model or if you want to do it this way. All right, this setup is actually probably a more interesting test setup than using the Razer Blade Stealth with the GTX 1070 card. Not that there's anything boring about a GTX 1070, but this one you're going to get more performance with because this is the Dell XPS 15 2 in 1 9575. So this one has that interesting architecture where we've got a quad core 45 watt CPU in here, sort of equivalent to the Core i7 7700HQ. It's really the A705, and it's paired with the AMD Vega GL graphics, that, that hybrid CPU-GPU combo. So we're using the Radeon RX 570, as you can see here, which is a lower mid-range card. It's not the most exciting card, but right now we've got a synergy of drivers because we, the Dell already has Dell AMD drivers installed, and it's a laptop that has enough power CPU-wise to game, but the GPU is kind of weak inside of it. You know, it's not really geared towards gaming. So we've put our RX 570 card inside. We've got it connected to an LG 27-inch 4K monitor that we're going to be running the games at 1080p resolution given the, the power or lack of power that this card has when it comes to driving 4K games. And you can see our core is set up here and connected. And I haven't put the cover back on so you can see what it looks like, all geeky and cool. Once the GPU is activated in game, then the GPU fans will start spinning too. The power supply fan is, of course, always spinning in this. So you can see the gameplay here. And again, you know, it's not the strongest GPU. So for Far Cry, Five, we're playing in normal difficulty for this graphic settings. Even playing in high, actually, the frame rates are about the same. They go between 45 to 60 frames per second. So it's okay. It's a little bit jerky sometimes. Uh, this is really to do more with the horsepower of the card. But also, take a look at the Fire Strike result here. That's okay result, but it's one to 2,000 points lower than we would see if this was plugged into a desktop. Now, Fire Strike is a graphics-heavy game uh, test, rather. It's not really testing the CPU, so it's not about the fact that this doesn't have a desktop CPU inside. But there's some performance loss, even when you have a four PCIe lane, 40 gigabit per second connection here using the official cable, which has full throughput. Another thing to note is that the core X, like I said, puts out up to 100 watts of charging power versus 65 watts for the, the Core V2. So that's enough probably for a MacBook Pro for those of you who want to use this AMD card with that. But the 
the Dell has 130 watt chargers. So it notifies you and it complains and it says it's only going to charge slowly if you use the core to charge it with. Experientially, if you are gaming, the charging rate won't keep up. But for everyday productivity work, even some video rendering, the charging level is actually sufficient. So what happens if you accidentally unplug the core from your laptop? People have asked about this and the Thunderbolt 3 connection isn't that sturdy and secure. Well, it really depends on the program. It's a plug and play setup, so you're allowed to actually just yank the plug if you want with Thunderbolt 3, but it's up to the application as to whether it handles it gracefully and just drops the frame rates or whether it crashes. So that's the Razer Core X. Pretty exciting because, well, number one, it has a huge power supply inside and it can take a triple wide graphics card. So boy, anything, the sky's the limit here. You want a GTX 1080 Ti, the most powerful Radeon card out there, you can do it. It's nice that the price has dropped too, but this is still overall an expensive kind of solution to a problem that does exist. A lot of you would like to be able to game at home and then maybe take, say, the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1 that I showed you there, or Razer Blade Stealth, that sort of thing, and you're going to get pretty decent performance. Obviously, you, there's some throughput loss once you put the GPU in the box. It's not going to be the same as using a desktop setup, but it can be more powerful. The challenge is still that this kind of solution is pretty expensive. You know, when you put this together with a pretty good GPU, you're talking about the cost of an entry to mid-level gaming laptops. So, there it is. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.